Soyuz 4 was launched on January 14, 1969 at 7.30 a.m. UTC from Site 31 at Baikonur Cosmodrome. It carried cosmonaut Vladimir Shatilov on his first space flight, and his goal while checking out the spacecraft was to wait for the launch of Soyuz 5 the next day, rendezvous and dock with it, and then take on board two cosmonauts from that vessel. Soyuz 4 had the probe docking port, while Soyuz 5 carried the drogue port. This would represent the first docking for the Soviet Union, and also the first transfer of crew between two spacecraft in general. Soyuz 4 launched with one cosmonaut, but would land with three, Shatilov, Alexei Yeliseyev, and Evgeny Krunov. Boris Volonov, the commander of Soyuz 5, would stay on board it and return with it, though it's safe to say that he would have rather been on board Soyuz 4. Soyuz 5 launched on schedule on January 15th at 7.04 a.m. from Site 1 at Baikonur Cosmodrome with Volonov, Yeliseyev, and Krunov. Volonov became the first Jewish person in space. He was originally assigned to the prime crew of Oskod 1, but his team was removed three days before launch for political reasons over the objection of Sergei Korolov, possibly because of Volonov's Jewish background. He was put on the Voskhod 3 mission with Yorgi Katis, but Katis was removed because his father had been executed in a purge. When Sergei Korolev died though, the Voskhod 3 mission was cancelled 10 days before launch, so Volonov had a rough time of getting to space, but he still got there. He would also have a rough time getting back down. The rendezvous between Soyuz 4 and 5 went smoothly on January 16th, docking ports were not designed to allow cosmonauts to pass through though, so the two cosmonauts transferring to Soyuz 4 had to conduct a spacewalk, an EVA, to get across. This is so far the only time this method has been used to transfer a crew. The only previous time the Soviet Union had conducted a spacewalk had been Alexei Lyonov's near-fatal EVA on Voskhod 2, but fortunately Lyonov was brought in to help design the new suits given his experience, so Yeliseyev and Krunov had a better time of it. The two vehicles stayed docked for 4 hours and 35 minutes, then Soyuz 4 departed Soyuz 5, now carrying three people. Soyuz 4 deorbited the next day without incident, landing in Kazakhstan at 6.50 a.m. UTC on the 17th. On January 18th, it was Volonov's turn to come back with Soyuz 5, and this is where things went wrong after a fairly smooth mission, as Soyuz 5 became the most dangerous space mission ever survived. After the re-entry burn, the spacecraft's service module failed to decouple. While this happened on Vostok, that service module was much smaller and Vostok was fully shielded rather than having a heat shield on one side. The decoupling failure on Soyuz 5 left it re-entering the wrong way around, nose side first, due to aerodynamics. The hatch began to burn through and Volonov was forced against his harness instead of into his seat. Fortunately, the struts connecting the service module to the descent module burned away before the hatch burned away, so the service module separated and the descent module reoriented the correct way around in time. The extra drag from the service module caused Soyuz 5 to land short in the Ural Mountains instead of Kazakhstan. The temperature was negative 38 degrees Celsius, which is conveniently almost the same in Fahrenheit. As if that wasn't bad enough, the parachute got a bit tangled, initially making Volonov worried that he would suffer the same fate as Komarov did on Soyuz 1. Komarov had managed to deal with all sorts of malfunctions with his spacecraft only to die because of a parachute failure. Volonov's wasn't that tangled, that it was going to be a hard landing, and that was made worse by the fact that the soft landing rockets that fire at the last moment before touchdown failed. Volonov broke some teeth. In the bitter cold, he had to walk a few kilometers to seek shelter, but he survived. As if that wasn't enough, in the ceremony to celebrate the successful combined mission where the cosmonauts would be congratulated by Leonid Brezhnev, an assassin trying to kill the Soviet leader aimed at the cars carrying the cosmonauts instead. Volnov, though, is a survivor. He went to space again after seven years in Soyuz 21, and as of the recording of this video, is the last living member of the original group of cosmonauts. With that, thank you for watching this mission profile of Soyuz 4 and 5.